as I watch the sun descending and the birds fly home to rest in the hush when day is ending that's the hour when I feel blessed smoking my pipe smoking my pipe like a whisper through the cornfield comes a gentle evening breeze at the doorway of my cottage I recall all memories Smoking my pipe Smoking my pipe Those far off places Beyond the blue Familiar faces Hello, brothers and sisters of the Briar, Professor Jeremiah, back with another to smoke every blend. Happy New Year to you. Uh, I tell you, I know it's been a little while, and there's just been a lot going on. I've been in and out of the country. I hope that you got to see my video from the tobacconist in Rio de Janeiro. I did go to a couple of other tobacco shops. I really wanted to video there, but I just never really had the opportunity to be able to film. Now, if you're on my Instagram, you can see a few pictures, not from this trip, but from my trip back in the fall, or right at the beginning of the fall of the year. Today, I just can't remember. I need to look back over my own videos, I guess. I don't know if I've shown this pipe before. This is one of just the inexpensive bog oak pipes, which you can pick up from eBay. And... I'm going to put a link, if, if this gentleman's still selling on eBay, I'll put a link down in the bucket below to their pipes. They're really not that expensive, and, you know, for a long time I wanted a, a bog oak pipe. I, I wanted to have just the experience of smoking one, and I didn't know what I would get. You know, some people raved about it, some people don't like them because they... Uh, would end up giving them problems and you never know you don't know what you're gonna get out of a piece of wood but uh, Morta is the other name for them well I tell you I've been thoroughly pleased with this one I, I couldn't picture having been any happier with it it's very lightweight um, yet very solid so I've been I've been as pleased with this as I would with the Meerschaum and I actually don't feel like I have to be as careful with this bowl as I would with the Meerschaum bowl. So I, I really like it. I don't know if it'll darken up much more. I know some of them come in pretty uh, dark, but you can see the grain on that. It's really amazing. And I think these were, I don't know, out of Ukraine or something. I can't remember now. I've had it for a little while, and I've been smoking on it for a good while. But lately... A blend which you really, I would say, settled on. I don't think these really ghost uh, like a briar pipe would. I think this is more like a Meerschaum in how it, it holds that flavor. But what I will say is I pretty much gravitated to a particular blend just because I enjoyed the length of smoke that I got out of this. Now, of late, this blend has started drying up just a little bit. But what am I talking about? Well, this is an old blend from the 1960s and it's Edgeworth Aromatic. Now again I, I'm gonna have the bucket pretty full today because I have a few links I want to give you but I will put a link up to this. We opened this at a pipe club meeting a few months back and uh, the gentleman who brought it to pipe club was kind enough to send it home with me. Now when he sent it home with me it was pretty much full. And I'm going to show you here. And, and disregard the discoloring of the sides of the tin. It's not rust. It's paper. But look at, look at where it's at. Now, these clearly just, I mean, I'm, I'm what, right to here on it. And uh, it got a, it's gotten a lot of smokes. I really enjoy it. I oftentimes enjoy this as the first smoke of the day. It's got a really nice room note. The, the flavor in it's excellent. Now, I'm gonna tell you what's in it, but I don't know if that really what that really means for 
uh, tobacco from the 1960s. You know, I, when it's been sealed up, and when they opened this up, I will tell you, they knew what they were doing when they sealed the tin back in the day, because it, it, its freshness, its moisture, it was ready to go. I bet you it had probably just a little bit more moisture when it was sealed up. And other than that, it really didn't seem to have been phased at all. So it's Burley Latakia Oriental Turkish. And then it's got Perique and Virginia. So it's kind of like a little smorgasbord there. And, you know, the only thing it's missing which is what I normally gravitate towards is Cavendish. It doesn't have any Cavendish in it. But over the time, I'm sure from the from the 1960s to now, you know, some 60 years later, I would think that that Perique's pretty much done, just faded away. Sure, it adds a little bit. But this is, this is a unique flavor, and I know to smoke every blend, it's like, well, he's talking about something I can't even get. Well, you never know. I, I just want to give you some hope for when you find those old sealed tins from the 60s and the 70s. You may have a treasure, and I think it's worth the risk, uh, because who would have thought that this tin still would have been that good? Now, it had the key on the bottom, it opened like an old sardine can. And if you watch the video I'm going to put a link to, you will see uh, that being opened up. The video's on another person's channel, so that's why I'm not splicing it in right here. But I went out and, and I got the match for this. It's a Sutliff, but it says Ready Rub Match. And yet, the more I looked into it, I believe this was a whole nother... Uh, Edgeworth tobacco that it came in like a blue or kind of a teal colored tin. Maybe it was blue when it started out and turned teal later. So I don't think that this match was really for the Edgeworth aromatic. The match blend and maybe I will come back and do a separate review on it. it I, you're supposed to get cocoa out of it. I got coconut a little bit out of it but that is that was me so so this blend what I'm I mean I don't I'm almost at a loss for how to describe it it's it's kind of like a roasted or toasted nut flavor and it's it is standalone I, I have not really experienced this particular flavor before in any other tobacco Just a very pleasant, pleasant room note, and and flavor, everything. I mean, just down to the to the final line. But if if I put the two side by side, smelling them, no, 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 completely different. Not 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 at all the same. The texture of the cut, where this one is more moist, the texture of the the cut of the tobacco is pretty similar. So, di disregarding the fact that this one's dried out some, and it's not overly dry, but I'm afraid if I don't move it out of this tin in the next couple of weeks with the gas heater going on here or the gas fireplace, I'm afraid it's going to go, go ahead and just dry it out. Maybe if I stick a little moist uh, towel uh, down inside it, that'll help keep it, and, and I may do that because I... Yeah, I kind of like the old, the old tin, and it's kind of neat on the old tin, is that the lid can go either way. So maybe it makes a better seal that way. I don't know. It did sound like right then it made a better seal. I'll just leave it like that. But <laughs> it's uh, been a very enjoyable smoke. So I said a couple of other things. I, I know a few of you are already aware of this. And I've seen you join it. I've seen your comments, so I'm not really posting all the comments on that. I have another YouTube channel, which is primarily for uh, my Bible uh, studies and, and commentary. And at the start of the first, the first of the year, uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, we started a read through the scriptures and using the YouVersion Bible app uh, on the phone and 
using in particular a plan, a study which is a chronological read through the scriptures. And any of you who are interested in that, I, I would love to offer that to you. Uh, I've also, in addition, on my alternate uh, YouTube channel, I've been doing just daily little excerpts, just a little commentary on the passage of scripture which we read the day before. So I have three of those up now and I, I wished I had invited you in on a, this on the first of the year, but we're only three days in so it would be relatively easy to catch up. You could really probably get caught up on the scripture reading portion in about 45 minutes, maybe even less, depends on how fast you read. Or uh, you can also get caught up on the videos which I've posted. This Bible reading app, and, and I'll show you on my phone here, uh, on the, the app here you see it says Holy Bible, that's the one right here, and I'm going to click on it, and version. And here's the, the thing I like about it, uh, the link that I send you will be to the plan, which is the one year chronological Bible, and I know maybe some of you aren't interested in this, but uh, you'll see it has a little place where you can check off each day uh, the Bible portion that you've read. But a neat part of this app, up here in this corner, you can select the version of the Bible which you're interested in reading. Uh, I use New American Standard 1995. It's very accurate. Uh, it's oftentimes used by Bible translators. Enough of that. Uh, but up here you'll also see the back arrow and then a little speaker and you click the little speaker you can listen Chapter seven. so you then have an audio Bible so I, I just wanted to, to offer you that and it's it's something maybe for those of you who are interested you you could participate in and it's really neat two years ago was the first time I had ever done scripture reading chronologically. I'd always just before started in Genesis and read from the beginning to the end. But as you know, there's events in the scriptures which overlap. And uh, this actually puts those all together at one time, one point, one place. So just wanted to share that with you. Now, if you didn't tune off uh, with that, this Friday, we are having our Falcon Friday meetup and I have a couple of invites already to send out but in the bucket below is the link to that Falcon Friday update you need to email me and say you want to be a part of that and then I will send you the link for zoom it will also be live streamed to YouTube so if you say well I can't join the zoom meeting then you can at least join us in the chat room or watch it later. So just wanted to offer that to you. Uh, Steve, uh, Three Rivers, and I will be hosting it, and we'd love to see you there. Brothers and sisters, don't be afraid of old tobacco tins. Just make sure there's no mold on the tobacco and then run with it. Well, hope you're having a blessed new year so far. Until next time, God bless.